the world of e-commerce changes quickly. It changes very quickly. Um, so there's maybe some people out there today who were told by a development team or, or given some advice a year ago, 18 months ago, that actually you should be on this platform. You should be on that platform. And now you've got someone preaching to you that you should be on another platform. And I think ultimately with all this and with the way that e-commerce is, it sort of has to, it sort of has to be taken into account where you are at with your brand, where you are at with your business and where you are looking to go. Hey, what's up? It's your boy Charles here. And in today's interview, I have with me Ben Pierce. Ben is the uh, Director of Operations at Digital Beans. Uh, they're basically a Shopify growth and web development agency. Ben, nice to see you here, man. Yeah, right, mate. How are you doing? Oh, I was saying before, I don't know if people will be able to see this, but I'm always feeling, feeling like I'm talking to you with a virtual backdrop. It looks so amazing compared to my little bit of a plant and and plain wall <laughs> yeah no we were we were just talking weren't we about where we're at and uh where we are in the world uh, i think we we've spoken before but we, we didn't even talk about where we were no. located so where, whereabouts are you ben just for the audience so they know where you are yeah so we're, we're obviously down in we're in the uk um we're, we're down south we're uh we're, we're down in kent so um we are in the garden of england um obviously a beautiful part of of the uk the, the second biggest county and naturally the, the cool thing as well with with being in kent is we're right by the the coast so we're a little bit out of the hustle and bustle you know plenty nice. of towns we've got canterbury which is probably a well, it is a city because it's got a cathedral but it's you know it's, it's more very much town driven you know we've got a great um food and, and drink industry down here and so many other other brands as well from from brick and mortar through to through to e-com so um us as a business we're based in a place called well, just mentioned there canterbury um but me personally i'm right down on the coast so i'm um i always say to people i'm in a place called folkestone which is where the channel tunnel is that connects okay. basically the UK with the rest of Europe, <laughs> which is yeah, yeah. is where all the freight comes through on the Channel Tunnel. Or if you're going on the docks, you're going from Dover, which is just down the road, over to Calais or over to France. Or so yeah, so that's that's where I am. Yeah, so you're a little bit further down. So I'm originally from uh, uh, Chislehurst. I don't know if you know where that. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So a little bit further up, but uh, yeah, as people can tell from my background. No, this isn't a virtual background. This is actually. I'm in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I, I moved here um, last year. So, um, yeah, we're in different time zones, but uh, still from, uh, yeah, originally from similar similar part of the world. <laughs> I mean, it's, it looks very much like Chiselhurst, just with a few more higher buildings. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 certainly, uh, yeah. The, the weather might be slightly different in January compared to Chiselhurst, I think. But... <laughs> we were just discussing that. I mean, I don't know yeah. if you've got any friends at the moment, obviously back at home in Chiselhurst, but the weather's been horrible. Uh, windy, yeah. rainy, it's just been, it's, it's gone from ice to wind and rain. I was saying to you, I'm hoping now that we get all the seasons, so we'll get some sun, like give me 50 degree heat tomorrow, then I think we can sort of compensate for how crap the weather's been recently. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Um Cool. Well, let's let's delve into it. Basically, I wanted to bring Ben on um, because uh, I wanted to get some insights or share some insights with my audience who, uh, you know, either they've got an e-commerce store or mm -hmm. and they're and they're an established business um, or they're looking to to get started with an e-commerce business and they're trying to decide on kind of what platform to choose. Um, the different options available and just kind of, yeah, we'll, we'll talk shop. We can go into kind of different directions um, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, provide some value where we can. So, um, but I guess the first thing uh, I wanted to ask you was, you know, in terms of platforms, when it mm -hmm. comes to e-commerce, like what's out there and what, what's available? What choices do people have when they're deciding on, on what platform to, to build their, their website on? Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose, first of all, what I'll do is I'll slightly caveat everything I'm about to say with the, I know for your audience out there that are in e-commerce and even for us in e-commerce, working with a number of different brands uh, on, on their stores, 
but also from my in-house experience, you know, my business partner, Pip, you know, him and his wife, Amy, run some thriving e-commerce brands online right now. So we know more than most agencies and, and brands sort of in this sector office, offering the services we do in development and and marketing and strategy and, and CRO techniques that the world of e-commerce changes quickly. It changes very quickly. Um, so there's maybe some people out there today who were told by a development team or, or given some advice a year ago, 18 months ago, that actually you should be on this platform. You shouldn't be on that platform. And now you've got someone preaching to you that you should be on another platform. And I think ultimately with all this and with the way that e-commerce is, it sort of has to it sort of has to be taken into account where you are at with your brand, where you are at with your business and where you are looking to go. So the type of agency that we are now, and we weren't this way, Digital Beans has been going for 12 years. We were very pro WooCommerce and WordPress for everything. For about 80% of our lifespan as Digital Beans, we only developed on WordPress and WooCommerce because of the open source nature of it, because of the drive from the guys who run WordPress and WooCommerce to have a plugin for everything, to be able to adapt their platform, to allow developers to adapt their platform, to be able to achieve an outcome that the customer and the client wants for their brand and their business to push it forward. That's why we always developed and, and built and, and run our stores on WordPress and WooCommerce. But over the past, and you've probably seen this, Charles, over the past 18 months, two years, probably a bit bit longer if we go back to the start and just before COVID, Shopify started making a lot of noise. And, and, I, and when I say a lot of noise, I mean, I mean a lot of noise. Yeah. And during that pe- period, for, for whatever reason, WordPress and WooCommerce, for us, and we can only speak from our on-the-ground um, experiences, started having some real fundamental issues. Um, and some real issues that they weren't able to fix, some headaches that merchants and e-com business owners had, especially if they're small to medium, wanting to get to the scale up point, that WordPress and WooCommerce just just couldn't solve. There, there, were, there were things that, that you should be able to do like that, but were taking too long, causing ha- headaches, causing issues. So we started to go, well, if this is where WordPress and WooCommerce are going, Shopify are actively releasing new things. They're merchant first. They're a marketplace. The data coming out is that they have got the best in terms of conversion rate checkout on the planet. So why aren't we tapping into that? Why aren't more small to medium brands tapping into that when it's so accessible to them and they can access that? So that's where we went full three after after COVID and, and became a Shopify growth agency. And now we we only do shopify builds we only do shopify growth if, we, if we've got a brand a retainer client we have ripped up the book and we said right you need to be on shopify um and ultimately the majority of our brands because of our areas of expertise and because pip and amy with their own brands like simply hair went through it they trusted us to take them on the right journey and i've got to say we're still feeling a bit of the pain from the transition with, with woocommerce and wordpress but if i tell you now that i look into my ticket log And I've got open about 16 tickets for WooCommerce and WordPress issues um, that are ongoing, that we're in discussions with different plugin developers and and trying to source fixes to to get them done for for clients compared to nothing for Shopify. And we've got some beastie stores on Shopify. It sort of paints a picture to how A, problem solving is a lot more efficient. The support is a lot more better at the moment on there. And how difficult actually... WordPress and WooCommerce are finding it to aid to their problems. And ultimately for me, that's why now I sit here as someone who is running a team of really creative, um, talented developers and designers that are making a difference now to merchants, to e-commerce business owners. Whereas before, we would only really hear from them when crap hits a fan. I won't swear, when, when crap hits a fan. Um, or we're delivering some paid marketing campaign. The possibilities are more endless. So I know that's a very long answer, but for me, spinning back, it would obviously depend where the business is at. But if you're an e-commerce brand right now, you have got the opportunity to seriously scale and grow. And for me, there's only one platform that you can do that headache-free. 
and and for me that that just and the proof is in the pudding it's 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 shopify right now that is really grabbing hold of that landscape and you can see that in the year by year growth between shopify and woocommerce at one point woocommerce had something like I think it's eighty percent of the e-commerce share, and and that is now nearly even. And I think that's in the space of something like five years, which is wow. if if you're WordPress and WooCommerce, something's gone horribly wrong. But if you're Shopify, you're doing something so right. Um, and and if you're now not on Shopify in the e-commerce world, people are looking at you and sort of going, "Do you know what you're missing out on?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So so for me. It, it's it's Shopify, but ultimately sympathise with a lot of brands out there that that have been given different advice and have are on different journeys. So I'm not trying to be that preacher that sits here and tells every single brand that you must be on Shopify, otherwise your e-commerce business is useless. Like that's just it's obviously not the case. No, no, but I guess yeah, the facts speak for themselves, don't they? There's obviously a, a clear trend and. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I was speaking to to an ecom owner yesterday, um, and I think they're around thirteen million in sales annually. They're on Shopify, and are you, I think there was a perception that Shopify was when it first came out that it was like just for kind of smaller, smaller stores, um, and then eventually you maybe go to something a bit more custom. Um, mm-hmm. But now it seems like there's there's some big there's some big brands on uh, Shopify as well as the kind of mum and pop stores that uh, that that pop up. So yeah, interesting. It's uh, that, you, that you've had the kind of yeah. On on that, sorry, Charles. Just just to quickly button, there's also a massive myth that Shopify is expensive because it takes a bit of a transactional rate. But ultimately, that transactional rate is only triggered when you make revenue. And it's such a small transactional rate that actually, if you're using stuff like PayPal, you know, Klarna, um, Stripe, et cetera, et cetera, they take a transactional rate anyway. Yeah. With the way that the Shopify checkout works is it, it takes your checkout. It, it, it molds your checkout within the Shopify platform. So therefore, ultimately, the transactional rate doesn't really change. It's, it's then what you pay monthly. Well, if you want a really quick store, if you want a store that's reliable, if you want a store that has great support, then you've got to pay for hosting and you've got to pay for good hosting. There's so many e-commerce stores out there which are slow, clunky, have issues left, right and center because they're running a different PHP version to what the store's built in or, or bits and pieces like that that really impacts a business is running. And there's business owners out there, even small business owners that you sort of hit on there. They don't know how, how to overcome that. They need the support from the platform. Well, then they need to pay developers like us who have an hourly rate and they go, oh, that's expensive for that, isn't it? Well, but you want us to work for it. Like you want you want us to fix your problem or this is how we fix your problem. You don't have that issue with Shopify. So actually, by the time you spend 200 quid on decent hosting and you've actually got hosting that can support your e-commerce business, you could be on Shopify's basic plan, which is like 20 quid a month. And, and, it, and it will have the same outcome. And ultimately, the difference between the packages depends on your growth. So therefore, it makes more sense that you up to the £60 a month package when you're at a point that you can lower those transactional fees. So therefore, it makes you more revenue and you're more profitable as a brand and so on and so forth. Shopify, you don't just jump the channels. You can easily be a brand that's a medium size or even a big brand like you mentioned there and just be on the standard Shopify plan for £65 a month. But you might be doing £13 million in revenue. It might not make sense from a transactional point of view, but your store could still run the same. It, it could still be as reliable. It could still be as fast. You can still have access to everything you need to have to make that 15 million a year. So therefore, actually, when, when it comes back to it, you know, there were loads of myths when Shopify first came around. But ultimately, the dependence on your business being profitable isn't down to how much that platform is going to cost. It's, it's down to how it runs. It's down to what tech you're using to make it more user friendly, to make it more efficient for a customer to go on that journey through your checkout. Because if you haven't got that and and you're not doing that, 
doesn't matter how much you spend on Charles to, to help you, you know, with, with whatever you need help with, whether it's SEO, whether it's digital marketing or anyone out there to, to do that work for you. If you've not got a store that can convert, it's all borderline useless investment. Yeah. So therefore, be on a platform where you've got the reliability. And it's also not expensive. <laughs> so it's 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 for me, it's it's right now for, for me, especially coming on on things like this. And when I talk to small to medium brands, it's busting those myths that for some reason Shopify still carries. And I think that's a really important thing to to, to alienate. Yeah, no, it makes sense. It makes sense. Um I guess people that are listening in are pro- that may be on WordPress, WooCommerce, yeah. are probably thinking, okay. That sounds great, Ben. We've, you know, we've invested this amount of money into our platform. Um, would you just suggest that we switch? Um, you know, what are the comp- what are the kind of conversations that you're having with, you know, potential clients that come to you or cli- existing clients to say, look, you know, we we've been using WooCommerce. We've, we're having some issues, but we don't know if we want to spend x amount to rebuild it on shopify you know mm-hmm. uh, what's the kind of uh yeah kind of obstacles and and questions that you're asking them as you're going through that kind of process and establishing whether you can help them so the, the big thing for me is well how much is that issue or how much is your website hindering at you at the moment what's your forecast what are your goals what are you looking to try and achieve because if you were to migrate to Shopify, it needs to make sense as to per what your next step is after. So therefore, for example, if a client's coming to me and going, let's say they've got an issue with Apple Pay. We've had loads of clients for whatever reason have had issues with Apple Pay um, on their checkout on WordPress and WooCommerce. It just doesn't doesn't work for whatever reason. It's a known bug in WordPress and WooCommerce. Um, and we've got a particular client who gets about six complaints a month that it, it doesn't work um and the only reason why it's not hidden is because people are actively trying to use it so therefore we're trying to encourage at the same time another um a, another way to proceed with your payment and your checkout instead but they still get these complaints through so the, the conversations then are well actually how much is from from that step how much is this issue hindering your conversion rate because if you're just about to spend let's say even two grand a month on ads and your conversion rate is 0.25 and you know a big issue and part of that is your apple pay which could maybe add let's say an extra 0.5 onto that that brings it closer to one percent then maybe having this shopify checkout if if research is right and that's got a 26 percent higher chance of converting than any other checkout on the web that could bring one percent straight into your brand and your business Then you look at some other CRO techniques that you can use and apps through Shopify that help you raise your average order value, helps you convert customers quicker and easier with the familiarity of a Shopify store. If you need to get to a 2% conversion rate to make your ads profitable, then you need to move away. You need need to do something different online. Um, It's as simple as that. So do you know if you're profitable as a brand? Do you know, how do you know, what's the break point of profitability if you're about to invest in paid campaign, in organic, in a new member of staff to take on your digital marketing? Because it's all well and good hiring someone in to help bring more people to your website. But if your website's not converting, there's, there's, no, there's no point in it. There's no point in your store. So therefore, it's, well, what is the problem? What is the solution? Now, obviously, if your conversion rate's already at 2% and you've got a highly profitable profitable brand, which means that you don't necessarily need Shopify right now, then it becomes a necess- it, it, it becomes like, you know, a nice to have. It's not a necessity. Um, so therefore, it's then dependent on, well, what is your direction of travel? What is the shelf life of your current website? What are your competitors doing right now? How are they grabbing hold of the, of the field of play, so to speak, in your sector? And I think that's really important as well. I think what we stress to clients now is that a site has between a 24 months to to three year cycle now. I think it's gone to the days where you'd invest in a website and it's a five year investment. I think now with the way that it it, it works and the way that that mobile is becoming one of the biggest, you know, if not every year, um, most important factor in terms of e-commerce trends and the different 
pathways and methods with new releases from Shopify and their additions and ways that designers build out websites on WordPress and WooCommerce. I think it's important that you're constantly up in your game. You're looking at redesigns. You're looking at freshening up every two years. That doesn't mean complete rebrand. It just means, well, new ways of doing things, new journeys. You, you, you also have the ability to split test. Every brand should be split testing landing pages. It's so easy to do, right? Especially if you're investing um, because you, you, need, you need that data, you need that information. So ultimately, if the data is telling you that something is not working, don't make that investment in PPC. <laughs> don't make that investment in someone coming in house. Invest in your site and store to try and improve that conversion rate. Because once that conversion rate gets improved, your average order value will follow and your lifetime value will follow. Remember, the more you engage customers, the better chance you've got of building a community. The more you build a community, the higher the lifetime value is going to be. You'll then start looking at referrals. It will then catch on. And ultimately, that's how a business becomes profitable and successful in the long run. Long run sorry. And that's a methodology in our framework that we carry out um, with brands. It has to start with those three metrics, conversion rate, average order value, and lifetime value. And I think if you are failing anywhere across those three, that's where Shopify can really help. Mm. No, that's, that's really solid advice. Um, you know, when I, when I sometimes speak to, to, to potential clients coming in and I look at their website, you know, I'm like, yeah, we, we can't help you yet. You, mm -hmm. there's, there's no amount of SEO traffic that's going to that gonna have an impact on your, you know, your average order value, your, your overall sales without fixing the real problem first, which is the website, which is typically when I bring you in, Ben, to, and pass them on to you because, uh, um, you know, that's your area of expertise. So, um, yeah, 100% okay. right. I think with that, it's important. I mean, we, you obviously sent a referral um, over recently, and I won't dive in too much about the brand, but um, I think ultimately sometimes when you do look at a, a store and a site and you think, wow, this is aesthetically beautiful. Like, this is beautiful. Like, it's creative. It's got animations. It's appealing visually. Great. But it could fail every single item in an e-commerce audit. And I think that's part of the issue. And I think that's an issue for a lot of brands. Go purpose over design. I think ultimately your store needs to have a purpose and your store needs to be able to identify how you take a customer from a homepage, a landing page, a product page to that checkout seamlessly. And I think where brands, especially who don't have the money to invest in paid are, are getting things wrong is that they are focusing too much on design. They are focusing too much on maybe that people are already affiliated with their brand and their product, and they're not necessarily driving people with their correct values, um, with the right sort of terminology, with accessible buttons and, 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 and you know, areas to, to, to click. I, I can't tell you the amount of brands that I've had a look at um, recently in the e-commerce world, which are, are quite small, that just don't have two CTAs above the fold. Like it's, it's, just, it's just the easiest thing to do. Just on your homepage, have a CTA on your banner, have a shop button in your menu. Just, just have those two buttons across uh, above the fold. Then a marketing banner at the top of your store. Always have a marketing banner at the top of your store. Whether it's to say free shipping over a total amount, there's a new range, take a look at it. Whether it's 20% discount for January only, hurry up, offer runs out soon. Those just two components, two CTAs and a marketing banner could be the difference between someone staying on your site and then viewing your products and then just going somewhere else straight away. Because if, if they can't get hold of that information in instantly and digest it, they're going to be going. And then you've got to sort of bring in the other factors. Come on, you're a brand. Every brand has USPs. Whether you're putting them out of your backside a little bit 10,000 products sold or, you know, um, made with the finest wood. I don't know why I've just said that, but I'm just trying to think out loud. Gluten-free, vegan, like, you know, um, B Corp. Everyone's got USPs in their value proposition. 
And if you don't, you need them. <laughs> you need to find yeah. ways of making them. And the more you can play on that across the journey from the home page to the actual product page, PDP pages are so important. The better chance you've got of standing out from the crowd, even as a small business, it's still so important. And that's without me even opening up the can of worms on social proof. You know, we've all got friends and family. Give them one of your products, selfie video, endorse it, endorse it. And then you've got content for ads. You've got content that yeah. people believe in. It's such easy little things that some businesses look at and go, oh, how am I going to do this? I don't know how I'm going to do this. It, it, it's little things that should come really naturally and takes 10 minutes of organization to be, to be able to do and to be able to solve. And even to its credit, WordPress and WooCommerce with their modular builders, they enable you to do these things. But on Shopify to do it with how easy it is to use, it's literally like a 10 minute job. We're not changing the world here. We're introducing things that are fundamentals for e-com brands um, to help them succeed um, in, in any walk of life for that store. So, yeah, so I, I think for, for, for me, again, you know, when it comes to these things, it's, it's difficult. Some people have solutions that they can't just click a finger and be able to make some of these changes. And, and again, coming back to, well, when should they make that change? If that is what's going on with your brand, just do it. Make the change. Because, again, I had a client the other day who we put their Shopify store live. They ummed and ahed about where they were at. You know, they only had something like 30 subscribers. Um, so they're not massive. They're doing like, I don't know, like 10, 15 one-off purchases a month as well. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, it's quite a high value product, but they're just sort of like, is it worth us doing it now? Or should we keep going with like the headaches that we've got around that we've got to do some manual subscription renewals and there's some pricing faults, which means we've got to go in and change those. Um, or do we make the jump? And we've done it through Recart Me. So it was a, it was a two and a half grand migration. migration. Like this, this isn't money that is going to put that business out of pocket, but they were still on and iron about whether to do that or put the money into some paid campaigns. And that marketing manager said to me the other day that now she's in Shopify and doing things in Shopify. She can't believe they even thought about whether the investment was worth it. And we got on live in 20 days. And she was like, it's like, it's like having a whole new business, a whole new world of opportunity. And I think that's the way if, if brands are suffocated with their platform at the moment and you want that, you know, now's, now's the time to migrate. It's, and it's a great time to migrate. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it, it sounds like, it, you know, it's a good business decision uh, as well as, you know, if staff are using a, a platform which is just clunky and is a headache, they're going to get demotivated. You know, mm -hmm. when you're actually using something that's, that's, that feels seamless and as easy to use um, and you can see the results then you know naturally that's just going to become more motivating for for your team so um mm -hmm. yeah it seems like it's kind of a win-win um so let's say that you are on shopify as a as a bit as a business an e-commerce business what what are some things that you're seeing company or mistakes that are kind of companies are making once they're actually set up um is there is there anything say i mean i know that you guys have obviously you create a really good service where you're helping uh clients migrate across um but are you are you speaking to any businesses that you know they've set up in shopify but they're there there's a few things or clear glaring errors um that they need to mm -hmm. kind of look at uh, addressing Yes, there's a couple of things for me. And by the way, I'm sorry, I, I do talk quite a lot. When I get into it, I'm quite passionate. Although I said I don't want to be the preacher, I do get quite quite passionate when I do go in. So feel free to butt in at any time. No, no, you're you're good. Good. no you're getting, um, no, no, I'm sure the audience are getting a lot of value from this. It's it's great, Ben. Hopefully, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather go on and provide value than say too little and um and give no context. So hopefully, it's helping. Um, no, so there's a couple of things for me. I'll, I'll hit on two things. Um, one, it's 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 jumping into a solution too soon. So for me, for any brand that's migrating, um, it's easy to go to an agency and a developer um, who go, yeah, I can create you this, I can do you this design, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and actually, what you're buying into is a custom theme. Now, again. If you're coming away from WordPress and WooCommerce or something like Magento, um, maybe not Wix or Squarespace because they're more templated, but there's a good chance that you've got quite a lot of design-driven elements. 
maybe animation as well. And out of the box, Shopify isn't this all bells and whistle from a design point of view type platform. Um, within Shopify, if you were to go with a, a template, for example, I'd give the example of like with WordPress and Beaver Builder, which is an element build, a bit like Elementor. Um, you can really take a skeleton template, build that out from a design perspective as much as you like without touching any CSS, without having to really hard code anything. But it's so adaptable in terms of the way that you can animate bring design components to life um, that ultimately where you go, and, and I used to use this phrase all the time, but the sky's the limit with WordPress, with, with Beaver Builder, et cetera. Um, with the way that, that Shopify works, it's, it's a little less generous on that front. So a lot of brands, when they go into it, start listening and they're not explained this fact. And brands and agencies and developers tend to just say to them, we can achieve this. We'll, we'll take a template, we'll use some custom CSS, and we can achieve this. Ultimately, with that, what they're doing is they're taking a template and molding their own custom theme around it and, and building out from there. Or from scratch, they're building a custom theme based on a template. And a lot of brands don't ask that question as to how. How are you doing it? Which way are you going about it? Are you just using a template and adding some CSS from a free Shopify theme? Or are you completely manipulating um, the design, the, 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 the liquid themes, the, the, the way that the, the, the theme works and the template is set up to be able to achieve a desired outcome or building your own? Like there's, 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 there's obviously three ways to go about it. Ultimately, what we say to brands is try and stick as much as you can within the Shopify theme customizer. And, and use a Shopify theme. The issue you've got if you go too far too soon is you can't update that theme. Now, although Shopify's theme updates are so incremental because you've got everything you need really um, to be able to set up a, a good store, a conversion-friendly store, and with the ability of additional CSS, you know, you can sort of take it to where you need to go to make a fully branded, nice, um, beautiful environment. If you go too far the other way, you won't be able to update. And then when you do update, excuse me, um, you will have so many issues because it won't be carrying over those customizations. You'll have formatting problems and it's a bigger job solving that sometimes than it is to sort of build yourself a new store. Plus, as soon as you go away from using a Shopify theme, you've not got Shopify support. You'll have to go through another developer for support on that, which will probably cost you more money in the long run to be able to do anything with that theme and make it harder to edit. So we tend to say to stores migrating, especially first time around with that first iteration, we spoke about a 24 month cycle now for stores. Try and bring it across as much alike as you can to your current store maybe if you haven't got big gripes with it but make some best practice changes to it to, to make it a better conversion first environment you know moving some things away get an e-commerce audit done and make logical data driven decisions on what you do with the design and then you store over i really love this animation that i've got over there can we make that work in shopify well, no, not really. It needs to be hard coded. So you'll need a custom theme to be able to carry that. Well, do you really need that animation? What, what, sir, what, what, you know, what is that animation going to give that customer compared to those two buttons, those two CTAs above the fold? You know, is it, is it really needed? Um, so yeah, so we always, we always advise a more practical approach um, instead of going down the whole, I need everything custom. Because again, you know, if you want something custom and you want something design led, then you're probably best staying with the headaches that you're having because you take design over everything on, on WordPress and WooCommerce. Now, also just to backtrack a little bit, that doesn't mean that extensive design alterations cannot happen within Shopify's customizer. I'm not doing it a disservice at all. There's so many options. It's easy to use. We build most of our sites using the Dawn theme and none of them look alike. So the capability is still there, but ultimately, so is Shopify support because we're not taking it to that point of manipulation where it doesn't become a Shopify theme anymore. Um, so that would be the first thing. Did I explain that okay, by the way? Because yeah, I'm, like, no, that I, makes... I, I'm also, just to put it out there, I am pro e-commerce. 
I'm pro strategy. I am not a dev on the ground. I understand the platforms. I can use them. But I'm not going to sit here and talk in code to anyone because that's boring and I don't even like doing that. Yeah. So therefore, I'd rather think, try and explain it. Yeah, yeah. And I think for probably much of my audience, that would, you know, and me included, it's going to go <laughs> over the head. So, yeah, let's uh, top, yeah, top level. Yeah. Uh, layman's terms is definitely the way forward, I think. Well, and that's why I'm trying to pick words out of my head and think as I say them, like in terms of how I describe it. So that, if you've got any more yeah. questions on that, let, let me know and I can come back to it. But the um, the other thing for me when it comes to migrating to Shopify, because it is so easy to use and it is quite simple to do yourselves in terms of being able to create a Shopify store and set one up, it would be around the migration. I've seen quite a lot of stores recently make the jump and do it themselves and come to us three or four months down the line because they've lost all order history. They've lost all the data that ultimately they once owned and they once had in one place from their old store, but they've now realized they need it and they don't have it um, because they don't know how to migrate that data over. And maybe they've tried to migrate that data over and there's solutions online that are either A, hacky, which is obviously not to someone's expertise, or B, it's not formatted properly and was becoming more of a headache. And then a developer was jumping in and having to be like, well, look, I need to charge you more for this because it's an alien environment. You want the data this way. So therefore, I'm going to have to migrate it like this. So the one big area that I would say to, to brands that are looking to migrate, again, is, OK, if you're setting up a new store and you've not got many orders, and you don't care about having that data, you've got wings fly. Have a go with it. But if you do actually want to migrate data over, and I would still say even with 20 orders, data is still king, like it really is, and you want it seamlessly done, come and speak to us or come and find a solution. Because ultimately at the end of the day, with any data that comes across, you can have serious formatting issues. That takes you away from your business. Any time that you put into developing a store, which isn't your area of expertise, let alone a migration, which has even more complexities to just developing a store, you're taking valuable time away from where you could be planning for the future of your brand, where you could be growing your brand, running it, helping your staff, doing things around new product ranges, planning for the launch of your new store. What takes you three months could take us 15 days, could take us 20 days. And you're not missing on anything. And then you've got our support post go live, which is where most issues tend to like sort of come, come to head and support on a reactivation and account reactivation strategy, et cetera, et cetera. So I'd always say to brands when they're thinking about migrating, think seriously about it. Think about what you've got to take out of the business to get this in. And do not forget when it comes to migration, how important it is that everything is formatted because you do not want to launch your new store that has content spacing and HTML code in different places where it's not pulled over properly or customers are going into their accounts and they're finding previous orders with different prices next to them or different products not matching or they can't see the product that was on that order because the SKUs are different and it's not synced up properly. Analytics isn't tracking. Again, this is different because you don't really know how to set that up and you've not set it up properly in Tag Manager. or So, you know, there's all these things to think about when, when migrating. And I think ultimately, if you can take the burden away from that technical involvement you have with the, with the migration, um, it means that creating your own store and having your new environment becomes a heck of a, heck of a lot easier. Yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, from from kind of my point of view, even when I, you know, stores that that are not only from the development side, from your point of view, but also you know, running an SEO agency. If I see that, um, you know, a business wants to do their own migration, that uh, I uh, I get very panicky um, because I've seen way too many times clients that have. Um, you know, or companies that have decided to potentially do that and traffic just drops off a cliff. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's not to mention, like I said, all of the, the development issues that you've just highlighted there. So I think uh, moral of the story is probably best to, to bring in a, an expert to, to get the job done um, opposed to yeah. try and do it yourself. And, you know, even I, those, I also, yeah. I was also, I was also just going to quickly say, Charles, well, the other thing that I didn't mention around a migration that is always forgotten. Um, we've actually put a blog up about like ways to migrate, which is is well worth looking at. It's like a step step by step guide um, on how you we'll can link do it, it in, the, in the show notes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so it is doable. But again, something else that gets missed quite a lot from these stores, and you, from an SEO perspective, must have come across this, is that the link structure on Shopify is different and it's unchangeable. So therefore, you have to have forward slash pages, forward slash, or forward slash blogs, forward slash. Instead of on WordPress and WooCommerce, you could pretty much amend any slug um, or any category or any sort of URL to be how you want it to be. So it's so important with anything that you build out on Shopify, you analyze those links compared to what they are now and set up those 301s. You need to put those redirects in place because if you don't, you can tell them what the uh, what the impact of that is, Charles. <laughs> yeah. Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, it's uh, it's very good points, Ben. Very good points. Um, I guess let's let's move on then to um, some Shopify apps. You know, obviously yeah. Shopify have got this whole kind of um, marketplace of apps. Um, mm-hmm. many of which you can obviously just install. Um, in, in terms of kind of some good foundational apps to install, uh, what are kind of some of your favorites that you you like to um, implement and install in your clients' websites? And and any, any kind of, because um, I know certainly with with WordPress, you know, sometimes if you install too many, uh, mm-hmm. plugins, which is their version that can cause some issues with the front end. Do you find that with, with Shopify or is it, is it more kind of streamlined? So I guess question A is some favorite Shopify apps and any considerations that you need to mm-hmm. think about when you are installing these apps on, on your website. Yeah. I, I mean, there's so many good apps out there, like for customer service, like gorgeous, if you're doing subscriptions, recharge i mean we had a subscription brand um on wordpress and woocommerce and for us to build out the account area that the client wanted for the user to be able to manage their subscription to reduce churn um it would have cost him thousands thousands and thousands and thousands because it would have had to all be done custom with then like the subscriptions we subscriptions linking into it um whereas recharge is just such a good subscription management tool and, and it deals with any everything like from from the payments to to obviously subscription management and then obviously it's smart in terms of being able to offer the end user the ability to do stuff like pause their subscription for now delay it by a month like lower the subscription etc cetera, etc cetera. um i always think the, the people who have got subscriptions done best is now tv have you ever gone through that process with them? it's like you'll you'll get an offer You'll, you'll have it. So you'll have entertainment for a pound for three months. Then you'll go on and you'll count, you, you'll cancel. Um, and then it asks you loads of questions and you'll still do it because you know on the final point, you're either going to get a renewal offer for a pound again, <laughs> to which then it's worth doing, or you'll just continue to cancel it. And I think it's the same with like Simply Cook and brands like that and Small, Small do it really well. And this yeah. is what Recharge gives smaller to medium-sized businesses, merchants, the ability to do. You can enter the big boy game and be, being able to like sort of do that. So again, it's it's being able to have these tools on Shopify that are proven to grow businesses because it's worked with bigger brands and they're now thriving. And I think one of those pieces of tech that we use for nearly all of our brands is from um from Rebuy Engine. So Rebuy have this app called the Smart Cart. Um, and it's something like $99 a month. So it's it's not cheap. But what it basically does is it attaches to your Shopify store and it gives you the ability to be able to have a side-on cart window. 
um, but it has so many perks to it. So for example, you can have at the top of it a progress bar. So it game it adds gamification to if you order up to a certain amount, you can get free delivery or a free gift at X amount or multi-buy options, et cetera, et cetera. And then what it does is it takes that logic into account and then offers relevant products in the cart for upsell to help people to be able to reach those goals um, easier and quicker within a click of a click of a finger. That's also all completely tailored. Like you can tailor that and customize it as much as you want. So you don't have to use Rebuy's AI that it predicts to the customer what they want. You can add whatever you want to that customer's basket, depending on what's in their basket and using logic. The other cool thing with the Rebuy Smart Car is it works with Recharge. So you can do stuff like upgrade to subscription and save 20% at cart level, which again is such a big value add-on and so easy for the customer to use. It's also on top of that, extremely responsive. So it's great to use on mobile. Um, and, and it's a beautiful sort of environment that links into any store nicely. It's customizable in terms of the look and feel and you can add your brand colors in, et cetera. Um, but the nice thing about this and, and with Rebuy is it's got this whole, and the smart car, it's got this whole data um, segmentation side of it. So what it will do is it will analyze how customers are using your smart car and tell you how they're using it. So it will give you all the data behind its performance. And if the smart cart hasn't generated for you what you're paying for the app in, in, in revenue that month, you don't have to pay for it. It's free. So therefore, it is just, I mean, it's just worth doing. Because if it's making you over £99 a month, it's like, okay, fine, great. It pays for itself. What you want to then do is have a look at your data and how you can expand it and sort of make it work more for you because using that rebuy smart car, we really have seen it make a massive difference to AOV. And I think a smart tactic with AOV for anyone out there um, is to look at your current AOV, install something like rebuy smart car to gamify where a free shipping might come in and basically look at the average price of your products and try and make it so that your free shipping value kicks in at to where you want your AOV to be. So for example, if currently you're at, let's say 18 pound average order value, but actually where you want to be is at 30 pound average order value, make your free shipping at 30 pounds and make sure that the smart cart is populating with products that help gets an average customer with 15 pounds worth of products in your car up to 30. Add other offers in there as well, like multi-buy. If you buy two of these products, we know it's £18 each so that they go over the £30 threshold. Well, actually, no, you can get then 5% off. So therefore, you get two products for 30 quid and free shipping. No brainer. Use those Amazon tactics that they do really well to push, cross-promote and upsell products and offer that prime experience, but within your own store. And I think Rebuy Smart Cart goes, goes a long way to that. Have you heard, have you heard about Rebuy? Charles, or is this? Uh, I, look, I, I haven't. Good. It's the first time I'm hearing about it. I'm listening in. It's yeah, interesting. Wicked. It's it's honestly yeah, probably. Check it out. And for me, with other platforms, and especially WordPress and WooCommerce, there's no one size fits all plugin for upsells. And Rebuy does that. Rebuy also has other apps on it, like um, Dynamic Bundles for upsells. You can also add their widget in for the carousels if you wanted to, um, so it can use AI to best push and upsell products to customers. Like it's it's not just a smart cart. It can also do post-sell, post-purchase um, offers and bits and pieces like that. So there's also a lot you get out of just having that one app, but the smart cart is well worth doing for any e-com brand out there. So 100% the smart cart. Um, and then the other side of it, I think, for anything like this, and especially if you're going on Shopify, is to, we all know with other platforms, you can't even trust Google Analytics for data. There's, there's no real data-driven platform that ultimately can give you the holy grail of what you need when it comes to metrics and to be able to make best practice decisions everyone has an issue with any data that comes through and anyone that reads data no matter the platform that you're on is always wondering in their head how what why like it's, it's just always a way 
so the best thing I can do for anyone is to recommend a platform called Triple Whale. For us, it's just the best platform that works with all the data sources to put it into one. And the best thing is, is they offer, I think, the most powerful segmentation that is out there at the moment. And it means that you can really dive in to those various attributes and metrics and be able to study actually how your store is performing and how your assets are performing for you. And when I say assets, I mean stuff then like Clavio, which again, if you're doing email marketing at the moment in e-commerce, you're probably doing it wrong if you're not using Clavio, <laughs> in all honesty. But that's a whole different conversation. Um, but it allows you to bring in stuff like Shopify, Clavio, um, Facebook, Meta, Google. So if you are doing all these campaigns, Triple Whale will really help survey and digest actually where these leads are coming from. And it's so easy to use as well. It's got predictive modeling. It can give you information on your ads that even Google can't give you when it comes to stuff like spend times, when your budget's being exhausted, like your customers when they're purchasing. It shows you your customers and the actual orders in Triple Whale. So you can actually see what everyone's buying. It brings everything into one place. And I think if you're moving to Shopify because you want a platform that's going to help you grow, you need to make better business decisions, probably. That's my caveat on that. Um, I just had to throw that in there. I didn't want to put everyone <laughs> under the same sort of like view. Um, so Triple Whale is going to help you do that. So for me, they're the, they're the two big ones. If, if you're a brand that's serious about growing and that's why you're moving to Shopify, Rebuy Smart Cart and Triple Whale for me are two must haves on, on any store. And they're well worth the investment to the point where we once gave a client who was spending, let's just say, well over 20 grand um, on ads every month, but were having issues with data. We said to them, lower your budget by 400 pounds a month, go on the top Triple Whale plan because that's going to give you the right insights you need for your data. Um, and and then only spend 19 and a half grand on ads because that's I, we believe that's what it can the difference it can make to a brand. So if you need to take it out your ad budget, but use it because it's well worth it. Nice, nice. Well, go and check that out, guys. That sounds like a really good tool to, you know, enhance your performance on your store. Ben, really, really, really valuable insights here. Um, I guess kind of just to you know, some final thoughts, any, any other thing, any other kind of, um, information or, or insights that you want to share for anyone that's like, you know, they have an e-commerce store or they're looking to migrate to Shopify. Um, yeah, any, any, anything that you uh, would like to kind of share with the audience before we, uh, before we wrap things up. I, I mean, for me, yeah, I think for, for me, so you know, it's always difficult to make this decision around migration. And, and hopefully, like, you know, some of the stuff I've said have helped, you know, ease some concerns on Shopify, giving you opportunity with, with what Shopify can give you. Um, but I'm not Mr. Shopify. I'm also not in charge of your brand. I'm not in charge of your business. Um, ultimately, for me, you know, purpose is what drives any decision within the e-com space. And, and when I say purpose... It's well, why, why, why are you spending 10 grand on ads? You know, is it making a difference? Why are you spending 10 grand on ads when you've not got any UGC content on your product pages or on your site at all? You know, why are you spending a thousand pound a month on creative and videos being made for you by a video agency? But again, you've got no UGC content and you've got a store that doesn't load after 20 seconds. You know, what is the purpose of your next investment? Where are you looking to take your brand? Because it doesn't matter if you're a small e-commerce brand. If anything, you've got more potential than those brands already in the scale up mode of their process because they're now driving the hard battle of going from, okay, we're starting to grow to, whoa, now we've really grown. And, and that is a very difficult step. But ultimately, if you're a startup or if you're a smaller brand and you're just you, you're at that point where you know you need to put in more time, you know you need to put in more investment, you know that you've got a great product and a great brand, you've got to put your foot onto the floor 
and make a decision on what your next decision is, because ultimately that decision will shape whether you go from, what did we say earlier on, you know, a five grand a month brand where you're okay as a one man band, you've got a good source of customers, this will do to actually, do you know what? I want 15 grand a month coming in from, from this business. I can facilitate that. I want 50 grand a month. I want on a hundred grand a month. You know, I want to be pushing a million. Where do you want to go? And it doesn't matter if you are really punting at it and, and you, you really, you know, it's a dream scenario. We can all dream. The world of e-commerce is about dreaming. You know, none of us are in this, in this space as entrepreneurs to not achieve anything. <laughs> we, we're all here to put money in the bank account because we know there's a market out there with customers that would be interested in the product. Otherwise, you wouldn't be selling the product. So therefore, give it its space online that it deserves to be able to grow and sell and give it that love to nurture it. And I think ultimately for me, if you're sitting on a problem and you're not fixing it, it's also a problem for your customers and your brand's not going to grow until you confront it. So I'm, I'm here. I'm, basically, I'm here. I'm, I'm here, obviously, today as the, you know, as, as what I do at Digital Beans. You know, we've got the new brand, Recart Me, you know, which is a, a very, and the reason why, by the way, and sorry to jump on this as a, as a promotional opportunity, so to speak, from this side of it. But oh, the, reason yeah, please, done, please plugger, yeah. the reason why I've done Recart Me is because Pip's an entrepreneur in e-commerce and I've always worked with small e-com brands. It's, it's my passion. I wanted to build a service that doesn't mean that a brand is tied to us and paying us 10 grand for a project or is tied to us and paying us a thousand pound, two thousand pound a month for nothing more than a website. So therefore, I wanted to release a product that can get them in a better space quicker. And, and that's why we've done Recart Me, because you can launch on Shopify with a very much optimized store that's going to perform. I'll put it on the limb. It'll perform better than your current one because we've put our expertise into it. And on top of that, it will give you better opportunities to grow in the future with whether you go with rebuy or not. It will give you better opportunity because of the checkout, because of the platform and because of the support Shopify provides. And it's not got those headaches that other platforms do um, like Magento and, and, and WooCommerce and WordPress. So it's scalable, which Squarespace and, and which, so to speak, is very much at the start of the ladder instead of in the middle or the, or the scale up for brands. So that's why we did recart me so i'm really passionate about trying to help businesses out so whether you use us or not for a migration if you need any advice charles you, you do this just give me a shout because i'm passionate about ecom so if i can help a brand i help a brand um and ultimately that's i think that's all we can do right now is pull together and try and navigate our way through this really busy e-commerce sort of let's call it city that is thriving but it's also a difficult place to be at times as well. It can be extremely lonely because you're often sold X, Y, and Z um, and the best way to go forward from different preachers. So, you know, come and speak to me because we're, we're in the industry. We've got our own brands. And ultimately, I wouldn't give any advice to anyone if I wasn't going to give it to my own my own team um, and with our own brands. Yeah. So where, where, where could they connect with you? Where's the best place to... Uh to yeah to connect uh and and drop you a message or 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 however you'd like to communicate just, just ask charles <laughs> <laughs> he gives my email out anyway no but in his, in his, obviously you hit me up on linkedin that's absolutely fine um or go to recart.me and, and contact and book something in um or obviously you can you can get hold of me through through digitalbeans.agency as well um so yeah so it's yeah I'm, I'm i'm out there i'm also on twitter if anyone wants to follow me by the way i've set up a business account uh, which is ben recart me um, so if anyone wants to follow me on now, I've got like four followers, but I'm still posting because I'm not pushing it. So if anyone wants to come and join me over there, feel free. Yeah, well, the Twitter or X as they call it now, isn't it? It's uh, It will it's, never be X, Charles. It will never uh, be X. It never. doesn't feel quite right, does it? Not quite yet. It's, uh, yeah, we'll see. It's certainly making some traction. I follow it mainly because yeah. of, uh, I'm in the, for, for I'm, I'm in the crypto space a bit for my own sins um mm -hmm. so yeah there's a lot of uh community on there but yeah it's good some good stuff on there good stuff Ben. well um that wraps up another interview guys um until next time peace out <laughs>